Now, some time ago in the uh, comments on one of my videos, I was asked by somebody if you could use uh, a TV aerial for uh, SDR purposes. And I said at the time that uh, probably not, because uh, the aerial for the TV is designed for a specific frequency. And unless you're interested in the, in, interested in the general frequencies that uh, the TV stations uh, and uh, FM stations uh, broadcast on, then it's not going to be uh, much use to you. And I did a bit of a search after that question, and it seems to be a uh, question that comes up uh, quite a lot on the forums, uh, on Reddit, etc., with people asking if they can use their TV aerial for uh, an SDR uh, setup. And uh, although I would say no, there are two types of uh, TV aerial. There's the more traditional Yagi antenna, and uh, there's this one here that is the log periodic antenna. Now the uh, main difference between the two antennas is uh, that the Yagi, traditional Yagi, tends to have a uh, reflector, a back reflector on uh, the uh, aerial, but uh, the log periodic does not have a reflector. Now the thing about the uh, log periodic is it's uh, a particularly broadband antenna and tends to work on a uh, broad range of uh, different frequencies and that's why you will often see these in a uh, RF test lab for instance uh, because they work over such a wide range of frequencies uh, they're used in uh, the lab just like the uh, Vivaldi antenna is uh, quite a broadband antenna so you would see this used in uh, you know test setups in a uh, RF lab for instance you will also find uh, the log periodic antenna now I picked this one up I picked this one up off Amazon I'll put a uh, link below but uh, there's a few sellers selling these on eBay on Alibaba all seem to be about the same price of 10 11 pounds and uh, I thought it'd be interesting if we took a look at this see how it's constructed and uh, modify this one I'm going to uh, put an SMA connector on this one to make it easier for me to uh, use and test uh, you could probably also put an n-type connector on this but I'm going to get rid of this connector here and also swap out the uh, coax that's on the inside of this antenna because the coax will be uh, 75 ohm and I want this to be 50 ohm just so I can test it on the uh, network analyzer or the spectrum analyzer so that's what we're going to do we're going to uh, tear this down modify it with some uh, better quality coax and a better quality connector and then give it a test and see uh, you know the different frequencies that you do get a pretty good response on this with and see if it you know it is actually viable as a uh, software defined radio antenna so first things first then i'm going to get rid of all this hardware here so uh, it's easier to work on and i'm going to remove the end cap here it's held in place with a couple of uh, phillips screws but uh, the connector that's on this is a little bit wibbly wobbly i mean uh, these only uh, retail for around 10 pounds so you can't expect much from it but the rest of the construction does seem pretty solid it's uh, extremely lightweight so you know it does have potential so let me get rid of all this hardware here so we can take a closer look so i've removed the uh, cap from the front of the uh, antenna and we can now see how uh, this antenna is uh, wired up and basically it's got two halves and uh, the uh, what I could normally call the uh, center core of the coax, the signal, uh, is uh, soldered on to this tab here. So that's soldered on to the uh, top boom of the antenna. It's actually snapped off, and I'm not sure if uh, I did that removing the cap or it was snapped off, but uh, it's no longer connected to the little uh, metal tab there that it was soldered on to. And uh, you've got uh, this wire here, which is normally the outer braid, but uh, as you can see, this is no braid. And that's the ground plane, and that's soldered onto this uh, little tab here on uh, the bottom part of the boom, where we get the uh, connector here at the bottom. So this is all ground, and then the top one is uh, all signal. So it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, wire that up with some 50 ohm coax, but it just gives you an idea on the construction quality that you get i mean they go to the effort of producing uh, the body itself which is uh, made out of aluminium and then go ahead and really uh, bodge the job up 
uh, you know, with uh, some poor construction there at the end. You know, it just seems a little bit pointless to me. I mean, if you want to pay somebody a little bit more money and uh, use some better quality coax and, you know, stick an extra five, six, uh, even ten pounds onto the price, I would have thought that would be a lot better than uh, producing something like this, which is just either doomed to fail or it's failed before we even connect it because this wasn't uh, connected in any way to the top part of uh, this boom here. So I'm going to be using this SMA mount uh, connector here and I've drilled three holes in the boom already as you can see and I'm going to mount it uh, slightly diagonal in a uh, diamond shape. Now this SMA connector is made of some kind of alloy probably based on aluminium um, whatever it is you can't solder to this so again I'm using a tag just like they did in the original one and uh, I've got the tag for the ground plane here going through one of the screws that I'm going to use to mount it to the uh, boom here and you can see that I've soldered in the uh, center connector pin here and the coax and the coax just runs all the way down the boom and it's soldered into uh, the top part of the boom here again using the same tags a little bit of heat shrink tubing on here just to make sure I don't short anything out on this end so now it's just a simple matter of mounting it onto the boom like so using the three screws I'm just not going to bother putting a screw through the uh, fourth hole but basically the cap's going to go back in place so there is going to be a little bit of a gap round here but it's not going to make much of a difference but of course if you're going to mount this outside you want to make sure it's waterproof so probably uh, pack the uh, gap and everything else with a little bit of silicone if you want to permanently mount it outside. So now that I've done the modification you can see a lot more clearly how this uh, antenna is uh, wired up. The uh, top part of the boom here is the ground plane and that's connected to the outer braid of the coax itself and then we've got the signal part of the uh, inner core of the coax coming down here and then that's the uh, bottom uh, boom on this and uh, both are isolated from each other. And here's a uh, shot down here on the uh, connector itself, just in case you didn't quite catch what I'd done there. We've got the uh, solder tag screwed down onto the uh, boom. The uh, outer braid is soldered onto that, and the center part of the signal from the coax is uh, soldered onto the center pin of this SMA connector, and then everything's uh, secured in there with uh, the Phillips head screws. So I've got the antenna hooked up to the uh, network analyzer and I've already logged down uh, the frequencies that uh, this works well at but um, I'll go through the list on the bench in a moment but I just thought I'd show you on the display on the network analyzer some of the uh, nicer frequencies that this antenna works at. So at the moment on the display I'm not showing all of the range that uh, this works at at one go. What I've decided to do is just uh, look at it in different chunks and we'll look at some of the more interesting frequencies that this particular antenna works at. Now I've logged down that this antenna works well at 3.2 to 3.3 gigahertz and this is this dip just down here. It also works not bad further up there at 3.45 gigahertz but we've got a really good response down here so this antenna is going to work really well for software defined radio at 3.2 to 3.3 gigahertz so that's the highest frequency that I've logged it at. So the next frequency I'm looking at is 1.8 gigahertz to 2.3 gigahertz so it starts around here and you've got some peaks and troughs here but generally we're getting a pretty good wide response all the way over to here which is about 2.3 gigahertz so it's going to work really well in that range we've also got a uh, second response over here down at uh, 2.3 gigahertz now unfortunately this antenna is no good for Wi-Fi it doesn't work well at 2.4 gigahertz but you can see there you've got a pretty wide range of frequency there from uh, 1.8 to 2.3 gigahertz so for a software defined radio any frequencies in that area you're going to pick them up uh, you know with this uh, antenna uh, thing to note as well is VSWR so these little points here we're getting more feedback down the transmission line so it's a higher VSWR now because a software defined radio is only receiving 
you don't have to worry about VSWR it's only for when you're uh, transmitting so we've got a pretty wide range between 1.8 and 1.3 gigahertz there so again here we're still in the uh, gigahertz range and we're looking at uh, 1.6 gigahertz here to uh, 1.7 gigahertz 1.74 gigahertz there and uh, we've got a good response there and you can see that second that previous response there 1.85 gigahertz all the way to uh, 2.3 gigahertz so that's another good response in the gigahertz range so now it's starting to get a little bit more jumpy that's just the uh, nature of this antenna and uh, the fact that I've got it on the bench now I shouldn't really have it on the bench I've noticed that uh, with the lower frequencies uh, you can kind of get away with a quick test on the uh, you know say 2.4 5.8 gigahertz on the bench but uh, on the lower frequencies it does jump around a little bit and it's hard to stabilize it on the screen but you can see here we've got a really good response and that's about 1.1 gigahertz all the way up to about 1.9 gigahertz there so you know an another great response and we can even go backwards here so we can see it in a little bit more detail 1.3 gigahertz to 1.4 gigahertz so now we're in the sub gigahertz range and I'm looking at uh, 513 megahertz to uh, 670 megahertz and this is this nice dip that we've got around here so it's going to work really well there up in this frequency as well we've got another dip here that's uh, 7 to uh, 9 to 9 megahertz but uh, if I zoomed in a little bit more there'll be a little bit more of a dip there but you can clearly see all the way back here now all the way down the scale we're getting a really good response and this is kind of in the area that this antenna is designed to work at anyway so you'd expect that but uh, I'll go over to the bench and I'll go through all of the uh, frequencies that this works at I'll also type it up and put it in the description but uh, you know a little bit of modification it should be a nice starter antenna for you know your upgrade um, for uh, your cheap uh, SDR setup and this would be a nice uh, starter antenna directional antenna to get you uh, kicked off and uh, playing around with so it's pretty impressive really for the money as well so this turned out to be uh, quite a uh, broadband antenna so let's just have a quick look at the frequencies then I found it worked best at uh, 20 megahertz to 133 megahertz then 150 to 341 megahertz then 513 to 670 megahertz 795 to 929 and then 1.1 gigahertz to 1.19 gigahertz 1.3 gigahertz to 1.4 gigahertz 1.6 gigahertz to 1.77 1.85 to 2.3 gigahertz there is a couple of dips in between there but across that band it works pretty well uh, 2.6 gigahertz to 2.7 and then 2.2 to 3.3 and a little bit beyond that as well but these are all the uh, rock solid frequencies that this will uh, work for you at so I'll type these frequencies up and I'll put them in the description of the video but uh, if you did enjoy this video please give a uh, thumbs up I'll give a link to uh, this antenna on uh, Amazon and uh, you know if you want to purchase it but uh, it is available on lots of other sites as well including eBay and Alibaba and uh, they're all around a similar kind of price around 10 11 pounds but uh, if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.